how do you set up docker on free bsd this is the question that i've been asking myself for the past i don't know five hours or six hours i've been trying to wiggle around my system to make it work to have multiple instances of web servers and whatever running you know and i finally managed to to have it to set it up uh, properly so let me point out um, first what I'm doing because there, there might be people that actually don't understand what I'm doing. Um, it's basically just um, running multiple servers, multiple sub servers inside of a server, inside of a FreeBSD server. If you don't know what FreeBSD is, it's a, a Unix operating system. It's um, for reference, Linux, macOS is are both Unix, so they follow the same architecture, you could say. Um, um, so yeah, it's it's basically an operating system that I've been learning. I've been into it since this morning because it looks quite interesting. Although there are more BSD distributions like OpenBSD that is apparently meant for security and um, for servers and not for desktop use. And FreeBSD is meant for like general stuff like desktop servers, whatever. And it's it's quite interesting, yeah. So how do you set up Docker? Docker is a technology that allows you to um, virtualize um, applications and services inside of your computer. So you could be running uh, multiple databases, multiple uh, web servers inside of one single server. And it's pretty popular among companies and I guess um, uh, businesses. So if you're business or if your like um, companies uh, is running FreeBSD, how are you going to acquire something that w works or looks or operates like Docker? Well, you have jails. So I've I found jails through an stack, through a Stack Overflow article that where they basically said that Docker is not natively supported and that you have to go to jails. And I read this book. I read this page about it. How it, how it works, how do you set it up, and it's similar to chroot, to the chroot concept, um, basically having multiple uh, root structures instead of uh, your system, something like that, although I'm not sure, but it's basically that. Um, now let me show you what I did, so this is my FreeBSD uh, instance, uh, running as a virtual machine, and if I go ifconfig, you can see on my vtnet0, um, it's running on the IP 192.168.12244. So you can see that if I connect to this IP, I get uh, nginx. So doing jls, which lists all of uh, all of my uh, jl instances, all of my jls. You can see I have one with uh, with an ID of eight and host name as web, and it's path to something. Path is the chroot environment, so if I go to jails, I guess here you can see it, like you have uh, a new uh, root uh, structure, which is the one of the, the jail that we are using. So um, you can see although that there is no IP address, that because it inherits the one from the, from the host. So whenever you connect to the VM, to the host, it will hook you up to the... To the um, to the jail. So that's why, because this this jail is running nginx. So if I go then sh, there is nginx status. You can see it's running nginx, and uh, it hooks me up to this to this service. Now we could, I can also prove this by going vim user share um, user etsy user share etsy. W, w, I don't know, wait. Um, it's, no, wait. I need to Google this. Where is the location of my Nginx? Um, uh, free BSD. User local, sorry. FD Nginx. Nginx.conf. Right. And it serves the user local www nginx we're going to user local www nginx if 
we added the index page welcome to my pbsd uh to my open bsd i guess it changes now um how do we actually set this up how do we set up a jail um you might be wondering uh it's actually that that simple i followed this guide and alongside also this one um to set it up and let's actually go through this um for example we start with bsd install uh which if i now cancel it thank you bsd install if we take a look at the main page you need just the target option and then the, i guess the destination if the target has one in this case the jail the jail target has one so the target is like uh, what kind of BSD are we installing in, onto our system? Because for a jail, you need a an actual system. Like, uh, for example, if you're installing from the ISO, the ISO needs a file system. It needs its data. It needs its directories, between preset directories. So this is what you are going to install with BSD install. And here you have a target jail that installs everything that you need for a jail uh, container. Uh, a basic BSD instance, you could say. So, BSD install jail and then the destination where it's going to be installed. So, you create a directory, a new test jail, and BSD install jail uh, root jails and new test jail. I should say that it's not ethical to have jails inside of your root directory and uh, all of that, but this is just for testing purposes just to show you that it works um, I should make a video on how to make it more secure because I also have to I'm quite new to this and I should make a um, so do some research on how it should be more secure but according to my assumptions probably not be inside the favorite folder um, because of common sense so lib32 I guess that's all we need um, I should have specified the ports as well but okay it's okay let it be now let's wait for this process to uh, finish loading and it should be quite simple and quick there we go new password admin admin again common sense don't set your password to admin admin this is just a vm so yeah at the end of that i will destroy in a couple of um um minutes so okay would you like to add users to the installed system now yes um Although I will not use it probably. Uh, leave this, leave this, yes, yes. Admin. Yep. Use password based authentication, yes. Empty password, no. No. And password, admin, admin. Uh, no, and yes, and no. Okay. Now you can see that we have a, a new environment inside of the new test jail. And now I have to configure it, because still, if we do G JLS, you can see we have only one there. Interesting. How do we how do make how do we start the second one? Well, first of all, we're going to stop the second the first one, um, and this is achieved by doing service um, jail up and then the whole same web. So now what we have to do is I guess. JLS and you will see that none of them are running and we go to the etc jail.conf don't worry if you don't have this file you can just create it and uh, everything will be all right and then you need to create an, a new instance for example you write a new configuration set for your jail for example new web and you enter basic stuff like mount dev fs which, if you're wondering what this means, you have to look at the documentation of the conf. Uh, sorry, jail.conf man page to get the actual meaning of what this means. Um, so here we get mount.fs. Actually, I think you have to go to jail. Pardon. Uh, yeah, allow mount the first privilege. Users inside of jail will be able to mount and, and unmount the 
devfs file system this permission is effective only together with allow mount and only when enforce start fs is set to a value lower than two so yeah you, you, have, you have to go to jail or jail jail.conf to find those flags and uh, set them up for yourself exit clean i'm just setting those two because it's standard practice so yeah start sh etc etc those are the comments that are going to be executed when you stop or start the jail container so let's see rc dot shut down if you're wondering what this rc is um as far as i know it specifies the it's the uh, command that's it's the binary that's um you could say responsible for starting or stopping the um for booting the operating system if you want to configure it, the, I mean the boot process, you can go instead of etcrc.conf and here you will see the boot process. For example, for starting uh, several services on boot or for setting basic stuff on boot and whatever. Going back to this, at exec stop, then you head, hit the path for your uh, jail, new test jail, which should be you test chain yes or whatever you have then ip4 you can have you can set the ip address uh, as far as i know like this ip4 address oh addr okay addr and set set it to something specific but i just like to have it uh inherited because i don't have to deal with the dhcp and um, dns resolving and all of that so I will just set it to be inherited. Then host, host name, I'll set new web, I guess. And then allow row sockets one. This will allow, if you want to ping the ping from end to the, um, to the, to the jail. In this case, it doesn't really matter because we had it in inherited. So if you ping to the, to the VM, it'll ping to the VM and not to the actual container itself but if you ping from the container that makes a more sense I would say now we have it here so we can also start it with service jail start and then the name of the jail uh, oops post uh, allow row sockets where they mess this up oh right semicolon no such file or directory. Jails. Right, right. And we got working. So JLS and here we have the um, jail. Now you can go jxec um, new web bin sh and um, g update also install it to install um, various um, ports for example you could install for example in this case we're going to install um nginx just to prove that it works so pkg install uh, vim for it because i have to edit stuff um i'm not sure i'm, I'm just a beginner with freebsd and i'm not pre i'm not sure if this is the securest way to operate with freebsd like to install ports in some cases if you want nginx or stuff like that you it might be necessary of course but i myself am not sure so i will pick that as i go and learn about um nginx now we have to set it up so um bim service nginx start and if you don't start nginx we have to go inside of etsy rc.conf and here we um we change the boot order the boot the boot what happens on boot uh, i meant to say so nginx enable yes this is the file i was talking about earlier uh, what happens once the freebsd boots and now we have to uh, restart it so stop and start now jxec new web then sh and service nginx start this 
started running, okay, right? And if I do status, yeah, it's running. So now if I connect to 192.168.12244, we have the basic page. And if we change it now to uh, user local HTML nginx index.html, something like uh, h1, welcome to VBSD land. Getting land. Okay. And now if I refresh this, there you go. You have a working jail. Now, let me also tell you that there's other tools that you can use to work with multiple jails. Like easy jail that I mean dash admin. I tried it and there was this problem that I was getting that I couldn't inherit the IP and I had to deal with resolve so I just uh, thrown out of the window and used the normal jail to uh, to the config but you could no doubt use this as well because it makes things easier as far as, as, far as I know it's like a wrapper around um, to work with the containers and if you need to work with multiple of them um, you should check this out as far as I know, you also have more of them, like um, the jail versus IO cage. Yes, IO cage. You have more. You have multiple of those uh, kinds of software that like wrap around the jails, um, um, the dealing of jails, you could say. So yeah, that, that was the tutorial. I'll just show you uh, something that, that that I learned today, because um, I'm. Getting quite passionate about uh, FreeBSD, it looks really interesting and it looks cool to like get to um, get familiar with a new operating system that I never have never even touched before. It's like the same feeling when I uh, went into to the Linux community. It was something completely new and it was really interesting and it still is. But now going to FreeBSD is like. It gives me completely different uh, kind of uh, joy, you could say. And I think it will be the same when going to open PSD or other distributions. I'm sure it's, although it might be the same because they're all distributions of the same kernel and stuff, or maybe not. Um, but yeah, it's just a new kind of experience. And if you never tried FreeBSD, I suggest you to spin up something and uh, give it a go because really kind of skyrockets your interest if you start learning, if you give it enough time. So yeah, alongside this, wait, let me shut this down. I've also been trying to uh, to work with uh, the Temple OS. I, one day or two like ago, I tried to install it just for the sake of it. Um, it just looks cool and if you don't know what temple os is it's made by a genius programmer called terry davis unfortunately he passed away um i guess five years ago i think it was a friend told me so uh, i could even google it but uh, yeah he made this whole operating system by himself and it's really respect to this man he had some strange ideas and uh, thoughts about this world some of them were true, some of them were really, um, how would you say, creepy and um, just wrong, but uh, yeah, it was, I really respect what he what he did. So I might get into, into Temple OS as well, because it looks interesting as well, it just looks like a new experience, and if you're into IT, I would highly suggest you to try the same because trying new things in IT is always it's always interesting and you know why not at the end of the day if you got some time to spare why not have some fun and wiggle around your this goddamn system and make it do th new things that you you never thought were possible so yeah that's my advice <clears throat> and I think that's it for this video actually if you watch till the end, God, God bless you. I, I, I respect you. I respect you. So yeah.